Welcome to the Fantasy NASCAR Podcast brought to you by RaceForThePrize.com. Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Cup Series. Let's look at optimal lineups. Let's learn how to build some winning lineups for this weekend so we can have some fun and Memorial Day weekend. Also, if you want to have fun, Memorial Day weekend, go to my website, buy the spreadsheet. It will save you time, make it easier, more enjoyable to play Fantasy NASCAR. $30 for the month of June, and I'll throw in Charlotte. You want Charlotte alone, 10 bucks, but 30 for June, all those sheets. But hey, wait, there's more, 55. I'll give you June. I'll give you all the sheets in July, and I'll throw in Charlotte. Your whole summer of fantasy racing taken care of, 55 bucks, Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. No signups required, no automatic billing, no what's your address, what's your social security card, the Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, the money over, and you get in the sheets. Let's look at some optimal lineups from previous lessons races this is going to be a lesson it's a short track build first and foremost it's not your typical intermediate track build typical intermediate track 267 laps we're running 400 sunday night 400 laps that sounds a lot like a martinsville where they run 400 laps in the spring that means a lot of fast laps and laps led that means the impetus is on hogs or dominators the drivers that are out front leading laps scoring more points typically in an intermediate track build you get two to three hogs or dominators. And then with your other expensive pay up options, you're usually chasing place differential. So you have two to three hogs, two to three place differential, and then you get your value. But at a Charlotte, we tend to see the optimal lineup tend to have hog, 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 dominator, whatever. And then maybe your fourth expensive pay up option, Truex at 9,900, blends the two of place differential and some fast laps and then obviously you've got your value at the back that's kind of the general build that's the general short track build as opposed to intermediate track build which typically got a lot of las vegas we get like two hogs and then your second your third and fourth expensive option typically your place differential only and then you got some value that goes whichever way it goes so the first thing that i want to make sure that you're aware of is you kind of want to elevate chasing hogs more so than place differential and we'll go over previous optimal lineups to reinforce the numbers and those stats but the first takeaway i would encourage you is rather than chase place differential and i'm not saying fade place differential i'm not saying fade an expensive driver in the back what i'm saying is you really want to focus on nailing those hogs there's going to be three or four generally in the lineup who are up front, who finish up front, and can score a lot of points. There is no ceiling on these drivers. That's one of the things that I'll talk about here in a second. They can score a tremendous amount of points, 128, 72, 70, whereas when you chase place differential from an expensive driver in the back, they typically are not going to get out front and lead a bunch of laps. They're going to get their place differential, and then that's the cap. Blaney can just keep leading and leading and leading and go through the roof and carry your team. If you pay up for a placed inferential guy, he may have a solid floor, but he also has a ceiling that after he hits his top five position, he's not gonna keep scoring and scoring and scoring and he can't keep elevating your fantasy line. Now, again, I'm not saying that this to fade completely a place differential, but what I'm saying is you may have one PD guy that gets in, but I don't think I want two. Because if I put in two place differential chases into my optimal lineup, then I only have two guys that are going to keep ticking off points and rising and carrying and scoring and scoring and scoring. I would much rather have three drivers who have the opportunity to keep clicking off points and points and leading lap after lap after lap and carrying my team upward than only have two guys that can do it and then two guys with hard ceilings. Understand that's kind of the short track build versus the intermediate track build. You can't completely fade PD, but when we're talking about PD or place differential, I'd rather just only pay for one of those drivers. Now we have to see what the starting grid looks like, but I think regardless of, oh, there's three or four guys that are really good that are starting in the back. I honestly believe you really are only going to want one unless one can really rush to the front and lead a bunch of laps. Depends on who that driver is. But honestly, I would rather just take one of those expensive options that's going to climb through the field, has a hard ceiling, safe play, and then take three other picks that are going to be up front all day leading laps. 
don't completely fade place differential, but you really need to amp up your targeting of hog slash dominant. Okay, we're on the same board there. We're on the same page. I just want to reinforce that one more time and with a hypothetical. So, like, let's imagine Brad Kozlowski starting 30th. He drives to, tw to 5th. That's 25 place differential points. Well, look, this is more than 25 place differential points right here from Tyler Reddick. And even if he doesn't get 10 place differential points, just five maybe, he's going to outscore Brad Kozlowski in that scenario. William Byron's going to outscore Brad Kozlowski in that scenario. And they can go even higher if the race plays a different way. Brad Kozlowski is not likely going to go higher. He has a hard ceiling as a place differential play. Unless, of course, he's leading laps and does everything perfectly. But for the most part, he's driving from the back to the front. He gets his 25, and that's it. You don't get any more. Whereas if you're able to identify a hog or dominator, that guy can just absolutely go off and keep scoring and scoring and scoring. Now, there's more risk because it's trickier to predict who can actually get in to the lead, cycle to the lead. And, hey, but that's the nature of this game. And that's the nature of the data. And so we can look at previous races and say, all right, well, I want to win 100K. I don't want to play it safe. So you look and see, typically, our DFS, the top of the scoreboard, scores 61 hog points. The driver with the second most fantasy points, 39, 22, 14. So when we look at the scoreboards at the end of the day for all these previous Coca-Cola 600s and Charlotte races, we do notice that the drivers that are scoring the most fantasy points are also scoring plenty of fast laps and lap lead points. Not completely across the board, but at the very top, we do have to absolutely nail these two, and even the third guy is coming home with 20. Third most fantasy points is coming away with 20. Now maybe you can do better with the place differential play. Your fourth guy, probably not. That fourth guy in, that expensive guy, you're probably not going to go to the hog. If we're looking on the scoreboard, now he's going to get some fast lap points. I would guess that these 11, 17, 4, 10 are all fast lap points. But your fourth driver that you're spending towards, maybe not spending the most towards, probably is going to be a place differential play. If they only have to score 14 points in their secondary category, like you know your main category is finishing position. Then you have your secondary categories, which would be fast lap, slap, lead, hog, or place differential. We look at that secondary scoring option, 14 hog points versus 14 place differential. You can get to the fourth highest spot on the scoreboard without really running fast laps. You can get to the fourth highest part on the scoreboard. Brakislawski could be the fourth best play on the slate with the fourth most fantasy points. Not by being a hog, but by getting 15 place differential points. Then you add in his finishing position points, he finishes fourth. So when I'm building for Charlotte, I want at least three drivers that I expect to lead laps and run fast laps. Sure, they can get place differential as well, but these are drivers that I expect to control the race. My fourth guy should probably just be a place differential play, and he'll scrape a little bit of fast laps once he gets to the front. And then five and six in my lineups. Now, this is five and six overall. This is not five and six is in fifth and six in an optimal lineup. Typically, your fifth and sixth pick are going to be somewhere down here in the scoreboard because they're going to be value plays. But for fifth and sixth in my lineups, my values, I just want to get banged for your buck, maximizing finishing position, place differential. You know the game. We'll talk about value in a second. We look over here again, trying to predict hogs because we know we need those. They come from all over the place. So you're not going to find necessarily a pattern of here is where in Charlotte races, laps led come from. It's pretty spread out. Look, on average, the pole gets 31. But then, you know, right behind him, 21. We drop down here to 8. We got 26. We got a 20, a 10, a 13. I mean, it's pretty spread out. So there's no pattern there. And then it's just as peculiar when we look at specific drivers. Larson's had his day. Truex has had his day. And back when we had low downforce, high horsepower, Truex was putting up monster numbers at this track in this specific event. 
Elliott had a pretty good run for a while. Alex Bowman even had some solid races. Blaney last year. Ross Chastain the year before that. It's all over the place. It's a 400 lap race. Filled with a tremendous amount of cautions if you've looked at it recently. It really changes things a lot. Um, last thing on this that I'll close with. It's a hypothetical. I think it's a good hypothetical to put in your mind. Would you rather play Brad Kozlowski starting 30th or Chris Buescher starting 7th? Would you rather play Brad Kozlowski starting 30th or Chris Buescher starting 7th? Think about it. This is not a trick question. And I'm not like, it's not a Rorschach test, although it kind of is. The people that are going to pick Brad Kozlowski are probably saying that and they're playing it safe. So you are a safe conservative person. And then the people who pick Chris Bush at seventh are lunatics. This is your fantasy F1 Rorschach test. Kozlowski in 30th or Busher at seventh in the Coca-Cola 600. If you said Brad Kozlowski, you like to play it safe in life. You are very conservative. If you pick Chris Busher, you're a lunatic. Get out of here. Hide the women and children. Now, why do I say that? Obviously, the Brad Kozlowski play makes sense because there's place differential. He goes to the front, gets you what? If he finishes fifth, that's 25 place differential points. Fifth place finish, awesome play. The problem with the Brad Kozlowski play is that's what you get. That's all that you get. He'll give you the finishing position points, ching. He'll give you the place differential points, cha-ching. And then when we want the hog points or dominator points, wah, wah. That's fine, that's okay. High floor, low ceiling. Now we look at the busher play. Place differential, wah, wah, not there. Finishing position, if he's starting seventh, he has track position, clean air, cha-ching, he can get there. But what else can he do? He could lead laps and run fast laps. Brad Kozlowski's not likely gonna do that starting deep in the field. Busher's right there. He can get up front rather quickly, lead laps and run fast laps. And so when we look at that secondary, scoring category we've got finishing position both of them have the opportunity to maximize that get a top five place differential goes to brad but place differential has a hard ceiling of 25 points for brad he can have them take them there's your 25 points but you get no more whereas busher doesn't have the opportunity to score place differential points but he does have hog points on the board or dominator points fast laps laps led and he can score 25 he can score 30 he can score 35 we look at previous drivers in this race he can score 77 68 112 67 34 34 71 last time i checked all those numbers are bigger than 25 that is why i brought that hypothetical most people are going to answer Brad Kozlowski chase place differential. And that's not just to knock on most people, but that's also to allow you to understand building lineups for this Coca-Cola 600. Most people building lineups on Sunday afternoon are going to chase place differential, especially with their expensive drivers. And they might chase two of them. Imagine putting two place differential expensive drivers in your play, in your lineup. That's two hard caps, that's two hard ceilings. You are limiting the amount of fantasy points that you can score. You got two hogs, two place differential guys. Cool, it's safe, but you probably have taken yourself out of the contest because you don't have three drivers that can keep ka-chinging, 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 and singing as the fast laps are ringing and the leaders are leading. You've limited your opportunity. Whereas if you had three, you get three guys that can go out there and churn and burn as your score turns and goes higher and higher and higher. You put ceilings with those place differential guys. You get 25 place differential. You get what you get, and that's all that you get. Whereas you take a busher, and it's risky, but you got to risk it to get the biscuit, and he can get over 25 points, not through place differential, but through hog points. And he also starts seventh, and then you throw in three or four or five, six place differential on top of that. 
put a little bit of that on top of your biscuit. A little whipped cream on there. You whipped cream on a biscuit. Just put butter on it. Just put butter. Okay, now we explore the optimal lineups. And being that there are 400 lap races, we're not going to break down all of the context and all of the events that unfold. I guess I could. Anyway, we'll do a little bit of that here in a second when we talk about value. But you got Blaney. Hog, top finish, runs up front all day. Reddick, second or third highest driver rating, up front all day. Hog, William Byron, second highest driver rating, leads a bunch of laps. Hog, Truex, fourth highest driver rating, doesn't lead any laps because of issues during the race. You can read the racing notes if you would like to see it. Still is able to recover. 11 fast laps while he is up there. Uh, this race is filled with cautions. The last couple of races have been filled with cautions. Uh, you can check out the previous podcast where I break all of this down, the Coca-Cola 600s, to get your notes on that. But I would expect more cautions. Um, too long, didn't read. It's this car. It's this track. It's this racing style. Wreck, restart, re-rack, wreck. Restart, re rack, or well, wreck, re rack, restart. Welcome back, Jack, whatever it is. And then we look at our value. We'll talk about value in a second. In this lineup from last year, it was Austin Dillon, it was JJ Yaley. Both of these drivers finishing a little bit better than where they ran, but that's going to be the case when we have a bunch of cautions. Next gen, the year before that, 60 hog points, 23 hog points. Third highest score actually goes to a value place differential play. But then our fourth driver in, in this case, because we have him soaking it all up, and we have Elliott not finishing and Suarez not finishing. So obviously when you have hogs go down or dominators undominate, how can you be a dominator and finish 25th? Because it's a weird word. Yeah, I guess you didn't dominate, did you? How did you dominate and finish 25th? No, you were just a hog. You hogged some points for a while, and then you got in the mud. Some hogs love the mud. Some get out of the mud. But in the end, you just hogged up some points. Because of those two finishers, we get a little bit different of a lineup. Happens. You get Chastain, two. And then you do actually end up with a third and fourth place differential play. Oh man, but you said don't chase place differential for three or four picks. You're right, I did. But if you go with this build for 2022, you are making a bet that the driver that leads the most laps is gonna wreck out. I don't like making that bet. You're betting that not only one of the drivers that leads the laps wrecks out and has a problem, you probably are betting two. I don't like that either. I really don't like betting on, oh yeah, one of the best drivers, he ain't gonna finish. Okay. Oh, wait, oh, oh, but wait, there's more. Uh, two of the, the two of the best finishers, they ain't gonna finish either. You're betting against two of the best cars, not just one. You are betting that two of the best cars in the Coca-Cola 600 are just not gonna finish well. You got it. All right, go for it, and then you can play two place differential. I'm gonna say that's not gonna happen, and maybe one of them doesn't. Maybe one. I'll give you one there, Buster. The two. I think one, maybe, and then the other one still has a good day. And when that one still has a good day, he knocks out a Chase Briscoe or he knocks out a Kevin Harvick and we only get one place differential chaser. Makes sense to you, makes sense to me. And then you got your value play in Ty Dillon. Finishing a little bit better than where he runs. And we'll talk about value in a second. So again, to wrap on those, looking at hogs, in our optimal lineups and how important it is. I know it sounds like I'm kind of hammering this, but you guys know you got hammered a hog. 76, 24, 29, and then 11. That's your optimal lineup. 76 hog points. Can you get 76 place differential? No. 24 hog points. Maybe you get 24 place differential, maybe not, but that's 24 and there wasn't a ceiling so maybe the guy could get more 29 it's a lot of hog points and there's no ceiling on that and then your 
fourth guy in gets nine, he's a blended two. Or he gets 11. We look at the 22. And we got 68. You can't get 68 place differential. 23 from Larson. He also gets you a ton of place differential. That's the exception of, look, man, I'm not going to fault you for chasing play, chasing Kyle Larson if he's starting 36. You and I can both realize that, yeah, he can get to the front and he can do both. And then again, in this one, we only end up with a nine and a nine or with one guy, Briscoe. But that is because you have a 30 hog here without the finish. You got another 30 hog here without the finish. 30 hog points, in most cases, of our rock, scissors, paper of place differential versus hog. 30 hog points is going to win over place differential every time. And then also, there isn't a ceiling. The guy that gets 30 hall points, maybe he can score more. The place differential guy it can only score a finite amount because he can only go forward so much. Unless, of course, he's Kyle Larson and he can do both, which is fine. We all understand that. We look at 2021, which was a very green race, a little different than others. One caution in this race, and you get 110 hall points. From Kyle Larson. Even with him crushing, we still on the scoreboard and in the optimal lineup have a guy with 16. And he's also a place differential play. But then you get Byron with 27 hog points. Elliot with 22 hog points. You're able to fit in a really cheap busher who's a place differential play. And then there's Austin Dillon, former Coca Cola 600 winner, jumping up in there. But you can clearly see on the screen, you're going to need fast laps and laps led. And you can blend a little bit of the two if you're placed differential. And that's kind of what this Kyle Bush play was. He ended up being second on the scoreboard. But Larson, Hog one, Byron Hog two, Elliot Hog three, fourth pick Bush, who blends the two, pay up option of place differential. Then you got Busher and Dylan as your value. So I'm generally looking at three hogs. Fourth guy can blend Hog and PD. And then five and six value. We'll look at the 2020 Coca Cola 600. Hog one, 50 hog points. Hog two, 67 hog points. Hog three, 35 fantasy points. Fourth guy in that you're going to spend on. You get a little bit of a discount on Ryan Blaney at 8,100. He's placed differential and hog. And then five, six value in Custer McDowell. Seems like a general trend. Hog one, two, three, fourth, blends hog and PD, five and six value. Do we need to go back any further? We'll go back to 2019. Got to skip this 2020 race here because this was COVID days after the Coca Cola 600. It was not a 600 mile race. 2019, hog one, hog two, can't afford the next two. You do have a Hulk 3 and a Hulk 4, but you can't afford them. So then you actually end up in the place differential realm. Value, value, that is that line. I'd like to run the optimizer on that again, though, and see if you can make it work a little better. Because I think you can. I think you can run the optimizer again and run Elliot in and get Hulk 1, Hulk 2, Hulk 3 and find value down somewhere else. But we'll leave that for another day. So we pretty much summed up our spending on expensive drivers. Now we need to jump down, wrap up the pod, talking about value. What say you? Having fun, like, and subscribe, and share. Remember, remember, raceforthrise.com. 30 bucks for June, I will throw in Charlotte. That's Gateway, Portland, Sonoma, Iowa, New Hampshire. And some of you like to just pay once and not have to worry about it anymore. Have your summer taken care of. 55 Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. You're going to get all the Nashville. You're going to get all the Chicago Street Race action, Pocono action, Indy, IRP, holy moly. Fantasy NASCAR summer is here. It's going to be a blast. Today is my last day. Tomorrow is summer vacation. Actually, here today at noon is summer vacation. I'm so excited. 
and I just can't hide it. All right. Come on, dude. Optimal lineups talking about value picks to help us make some decisions. I'm here to help you save you time, make it easy, be a part of the team, the community. We love it. Even the critical comments, I really appreciate them because they make me better. They also give me an opportunity to show like, hey, I'm not a bad guy. I take some heat in the comments and I think I deal with it appropriately. And maybe some people realize, like, hey, he's not really a bad guy. I know the haters are going to hate, but we'll eventually turn them around. I know that everybody's loyal to their tout because you give money to your tout and you want to defend your purchase. But you can watch all the shows. I encourage you. You don't have to just watch my show. Watch the other shows. A lot of people do. All right, value, get to it. 2023, self-explanatory. Austin Dillon, get a bunch of cautions to the end. Average running position 21st, finishes 9th. You got to be running on that lead lap. J.J. Gailey is right on the edge. Absolutely right on the edge. Uh, we'll break this down a little bit further here in a second of how he exactly makes it work. But there is kind of a fine line. And you kind of know it. If a driver can hang on the lead lap, we get enough cautions, good restarts at the end, throw in some attrition, and then they go from a 25th place driver to a 15th place driver, cha-ching, ba-bing, that's how it works. That's the general rule. So as we go through, we'll show you that. Austin Dillon, obviously, if he's going to run in 21st all day, that's good. He's going to be on the front, the lead lap. He has an opportunity when we get a bunch of spins and wrecks at the end. It was him. Could have been somebody else in the cheaper range, but there's that place differential. J.J. Gailey was just there, just close enough. We'll look at 2022 from our value picks. Ty Dillon, 23rd, right there. Puts him about last card in the lead lap for a general run. Maybe throw in some lucky dogs. He's right there hanging in, and we get cautions, we get attrition. He picks up a spot here, he picks up a spot there. Decent restart at the end. He ends up being the guy. Stenhouse just has a wonderful day. Stenhouse has run pretty well at Charlotte, if you listen to the previous podcast. So keep your eye on him, especially his right hand. Okay. Where are your eyes at, Kyle? Got to watch him, man. Got to watch the moves. Come on now. Keep your eye. Stenhouse right hand. Looky Lou. 20 to 1. Only one caution in this race, so it really kind of wipes out a lot of the value. Busher has a pretty good day. Dylan has a pretty good day. Churning and burning laps. So we don't see that. Oh, if I can run 25th all day, I hang on to the lead lap. That's not going to happen when we have one caution for 400 laps, 600 miles. So. This one's a little bit more of an oddity. We're really worried about this optimal lineup if I'm trying to find a pattern with the value because there's only one caution. The general rule of if I can get this guy to run 25th, I can maybe make it work. Didn't happen in 2021 because they just ran green all day. 2020, we look at this one. And again, here's that 24. Here's that 22 from Cole Custer. These guys are generally... The last driver on the lead lap during a run, they hang on, they get lucky dogs. I mean, you look at Michael McDowell in this race in the 2020, the Coca-Cola 600. And you can always look over here at the notes if you've purchased the Fantasy NASCAR spreadsheet to get a little bit more context without having to watch the race over. But in the final caution, he received the last lucky dog. Huge. Puts him on the lead lap. He now gets to race with drivers on the same lap on the final restart. And he boosts himself up to 19th from 27th at 56. Ding dong. Oh, hey, guess what? Cole Custer, lap 300 of the 400-mile race. He also received a lucky dog. So he is there racing with drivers in the lead lap. He gets the lucky dog on, what, 400 or 300? We go for a run. Because of his position, he then stays on the lead lap again. We get the next caution for Michael McDowell. Lucky dog caution. Custer's still on the lead lap. We re-rack him. We restart him. 
and ultimately Custer, through attrition and maybe good restarts, finishes 13th. But he was able to stay in that safe zone, stay out of the slow zone, the no zone, stay out of the no zone. If you're running 28, 29, 30, you're going to get lapped first run. Then we restart again. We run 40 laps, and you get lapped again. And then guess what? Your grace is over. Your DFS punt is over. You really need that guy to just be able to get into that 20 zone. We go to 2019, looking at some of this value. These are not extreme value plays. Now they are getting the place differential. They're running just enough to keep you alive. Corey LaJoy, average running position, 23. Hanging in there. And we got 19, 16 cautions in this race. And even they're like, oh, he ran 23rd. Perfect. You got Busher who ran 21st. Great. But even with LaJoy running 23rd, he received a lucky dog on lap 252. He received a lucky dog on lap 302. So he was right there. I mean, he actually was over the edge. But because he was that first car lap down, he's able to hang on the lead lap. Stay in it. In it to win it. Well, not really. Just in it to finish it. But if you can finish the 600-mile race, you can finish 12. So for your value, it may not want to completely chase punts as we have seen we did get yaley that made it through last year and that might be the trend moving forward in the next gen car with tons of wrecks and cautions that we can get a punt and we did get ty dill in the year before that so it is something to look at and consider if that is a new pattern but generally the more conservative approach is that with my value driver i need them to be just fast enough to hang on to that lead lap and if you can't imagine them hanging on to the lead lap like harrison burton well, he's probably around 28. That's a scary spot because he can lose a lap early. They lose the lap on the second run. And even if this thing turns into a wreck fest at the end, he's out of luck. And kind of one of the examples of that I think is Ty Dillon from last year. Because you're probably saying, look at this J.J. Yaley play. Why wasn't it Ty Dillon? Why couldn't he have been an optimal pick in the 2023 race? Because his average running position was 32. That's the no zone. That's the you getting lapped early and often zone. And so when we do rack them and wreck them and restart them, it doesn't matter. He's lapsed down. And every time we're like, oh, well, it's a new lucky dog opportunity. No, because that lucky dog's probably now going to go to the guy who had misfortune who has a fast car. And it's like, all right, Ty Dillon's one lap down. But yeah, so is Chase Briscoe as well. And when we do this next run, Chase Briscoe is going to finish ahead of him. He's going to get the lucky dog. Like, oh, all right, well, next one. All right, cool. Briscoe got the lucky dog. Now it's going to be Ty Dillon's turn. No, that's not right because now we've got uh, Dana Suarez is a lap down too now. So Dana Suarez is going to outrace Ty Dillon on this run, and he's going to get the lucky dog. So once you fall into that hole, once you fall into that well, you ain't getting out. The dog's barking. The kid's trapped in the well. Ty Dillon's down in the well. Somebody save him. It looks pretty deep, man. That's dark and cold. There's spiders down there. Hey, Ty, how you doing down in the bottom of that well? I'm cold and my leg's broken. Somebody get me out. Are there any spiders down there? Yeah, there's a couple. All right. Good luck. We'll see you next year, Coca-Cola 600. Maybe you can stay in the lead lap this time. Maybe you have a little bit of speed at the beginning of the race. Because you didn't have any speed at the beginning of this race. Look at this. This is the no zone. Yeah, that's not where you want to be. That is not where you want to be at all. Now, Yaley's not in a great spot either, but Yaley is a little bit in front of him. Look, there's actually two drivers we want to focus on. I put them all on here. Will they all fit? No. Yeah, close enough. Yaley, let's say lap 18, 33rd. Ty, 36. BJ 35. We run it out. We're running. We're 30 laps in. BJ 34. Ty slugging away in 36. JJ up to 32. A little bit safer spot. Competition caution because of the rain. JJ 32. You're good. BJ in 34th. Guess what? You know what happened. 
Lucky dog for BJ. Ty, you just lost a lap in the first round, you clown. And now we're going to run again, and you're a lap down. And guess what's going to happen on this same next run? You're a lap down, you get lapped again, and BJ gets another lucky dog. He's two laps ahead. You're two laps down, 75 laps into the race. You can't run that deep. We're going to wreck, re-rack, and restart a bunch in the back. Last 100 laps. But here it is in the first 75. You already blew your lineup up. We chased this punt. He lost two laps. He couldn't beat BJ. Meanwhile, JJ, he's not doing much better, but he's in the safer spot at 32. And then through attrition, he's going to work his way a little bit closer to the front. And then through not making mistakes, he's just going to get in a little bit safer of the spots. Running 27th on shorter runs, he's just in a safe spot where he doesn't need wave arounds and lucky dogs. He's just close enough early on. And then as we wreck cars out, he's going to start even closer to the front. And he's just a little bit safer and a little bit safer. And in the end, it's fine. He can you know, run 30th for the first half of the race. Attrition happens. Second half of the race, he's in a pretty safe spot. And it doesn't matter if Ty Dillon finds speed later on. He already dug the hole too deep. You're not climbing out of that well. You're there forever. You're going to grow up down there. You're going to raise a family in the bottom of that well. Have little mole kids who have never seen the light of day. Just the way that it works. Can't be a slug. That's my main takeaway there. It's risky. And again, we see at our optimal alliance, we have two of these cheap pump plays coming through. But they got to be have a little bit of speed. If you're going to punt and take a 5,500, he's got to have a little bit of speed. If he loses those laps early, he's not going to get there. That's my main takeaway. Ty Dillon running there for Legacy Motor Club in 42 in 2022. Little bit of speed. Just enough to get through. JJ last year, just enough speed to get through. And a steadily improving Rick Ware operation. Thanks for joining me. Blessed as always to have you here. Liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting supporting everything even the people who don't like me somehow or for some reason listen to this podcast and that's great though that's awesome it means hey, look i don't have like the most the greatest personality my takes aren't always the best and sometimes i say things about people that are the nicest or kindest and i do feel bad for that and at some point i will have to make amends for the things that i've said and the takes that i've had and i'm trying to be better about that and Someday I will make amends with other people and we'll all be friends again. And I look forward to that day. It just will take me reaching out and being a better person. We'll get there. We will get there. And I appreciate all you guys listening, liking, subscribing, sharing, recruiting other people, share this with other people. I know you hate being that guy that shares podcasts. I am like, hey, you got to listen to this podcast kind of an annoying thing that I'll do occasionally. Don't be that guy, but please be that guy. You have to say, hey, you got to listen to this fancy NASCAR podcast. This guy covers everything, gets into all the details, the nitty gritty, breaking down all the lineups. Check it out. You want to be better at fancy NASCAR? You want to actually hear more about the racing breakdowns? Check this guy out. Be that nerd. Be my white knight. Be my champion. <laughs> Promote me. You guys have done a great job. We're, we're rocking and rolling here. Everything's growing and going well. Can't complain. So that's all good. The community is good. The only thing that I would change is that, yeah, I wish that sometimes I wouldn't say things that are critical of others. Sometimes I wish I wouldn't say things that attack others. And uh, I got to do a better job about that. Be kinder, more sympathetic, just a generally good person. And uh, kind of make up for some of the things I did in the past. Not a perfect person. Apologize to some people. Um, you know who. That's a that's a summer goal, and we'll see where that goes. Put that out into the universe. Put that out into the ether. 
Uh, sprinkle that around. Maybe the trolls listening will spread that message over. We'll see how that goes. Maybe that will soften the ground a little bit. And then uh, we'll, we'll see where things go from there. We'll get there. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I love you guys. Trip to light, fantastic. Big Memorial Day weekend coming. <laughs>